This is the Copper Lab, where we're going to watch copper metal go through a series of reactions and be part of a bunch of different compounds and then eventually be turned back into copper. Uh, we're going to work with some ordinary copper wire, which looks like this. We're going to start with a piece that's about one centimeter, so a little piece of copper wire like this, and we're going to put it into a test tube. And the first reaction will be turning the copper into copper nitrate. We're going to do that with nitric acid. So we'll add a little bit of nitric acid to the copper. The nitric acid is clear, and we put it in there. No reaction happens really quickly. I'm going to put this over into the fume hood and pull out one that I started a little earlier. So this is one that I started 20 minutes ago, and you can see that the solution has started to change color. It's starting to become blue, and you can see that little bubbles are coming off of the copper. And so those bubbles are hydrogen gas that's being produced. And then the solution's turning blue because copper ions are usually blue when they're in solution. Uh, this reaction we usually let sit overnight, so I have one that I started yesterday. And here's the one that I started yesterday. You can see for comparison that the one I started yesterday is now a dark blue color. The one that's only been going for 20 minutes is kind of a, a light blue color. And so the one that started yesterday, the copper metal is completely gone. It's completely turned into solution. And all those copper ions are causing the solution to be that bright blue color. So that reaction just takes time. And so I started it beforehand. The next step in this process, we're going to change the copper nitrate into copper hydroxide. So to do that, we're going to be adding sodium hydroxide. So I'll measure out five milliliters of sodium hydroxide. And then we're going to add the sodium hydroxide to our copper nitrate. And this reaction is going to be producing copper hydroxide. You can see it's gotten chunky, a solid is formed, precipitate, and it's still a bright blue color. But the consistency has definitely changed from when it was copper nitrate. When it was copper nitrate, it was dissolved in water, and now there's definitely a precipitate that's formed. There's definitely some solid particles in there. Our next step is going to be to heat it. So we're going to take the copper hydroxide and we're going to heat it. Heating the copper hydroxide will change it into copper oxide. So I'll place it into this hot water bath. I'm not going to add any chemicals to it. I'm just going to add heat. And as it heats, we should see a reaction take place. We should see the copper oxide, or sorry, the copper hydroxide changing into copper oxide. Uh, we can see a little color change is starting to occur. I'm going to stir it around a little bit and then continue to heat it. Okay, we can see a color change. It's getting darker. Stir it around a bit more it a little bit more. And now it looks like most of the copper hydroxide has turned into copper oxide, and now it has a distinctly different color. It's turned black. So it was that bright blue color when it was copper hydroxide, and now it's copper oxide, which is this dark black color. Um, we're going to leave this in a test tube rack for a minute to let it cool a bit. And as it cools, I actually have one that I started a bit earlier. As it cools, you're going to see the substances start to separate out. So the copper oxide is a solid and it's settling down to the bottom because it has a higher density. And then there's some liquid remaining up here at the top. Well, we don't need the, that liquid at the top anymore. That doesn't contain any of the copper in it. So we're going to try to remove some of that clear liquid without removing too much of the uh, copper oxide at the bottom there. So we got rid of most of that extra liquid. And now we have kind of a black solution that definitely has some solid particles floating around in it. And so for our next step, we're going to be adding hydrochloric acid. We'll be adding 20 drops of hydrochloric acid. There's 20 drops of hydrochloric acid, and you can see a reaction starting to pl take place where the hydrochloric acid is mixed with the copper chloride. 
In this step, you're forming copper 2 chloride. And so we'll stir this around a bit and let the reaction finish taking place. You can see those black solids are the copper oxide. And then as it's being mixed in with the hydrochloric acid, copper 2 chloride is forming. And copper 2 chloride is soluble in water. And so you can see now it's become kind of a bluish green solution again. And now it no longer has any solid particles in it. You can definitely see through the solution again. All right, and then our final reaction, we're going to be adding a piece of aluminum metal. Uh, when we add the aluminum metal, we'll see a reaction take place. It's actually taking place in two steps. So you see those gas bubbles that are forming are hydrogen gas, and that's the aluminum reacting with the uh, excess hydrochloric acid. And then the other reaction that you see is right here, sinking down to the bottom, you see copper being formed again. And so it's kind of the familiar color that our original copper wire was, the reddish brown color of copper. And we should see that we get the same amount of copper that we started with. So we've taken copper through a series of reactions. We didn't produce copper. We didn't destroy the copper that we started with. It just changed form several times. And now we're making the copper back into a solid. So the aluminum metal is now going into the solution. And then the copper is becoming a solid and it's settling down to the bottom. And in the end, we should have the same amount of copper that we started if, with. If we started with one gram of copper, we should still have one gram of copper at the end. We didn't create or destroy any copper. It just changed into several different forms.